This episode of Android Weekly is brought to you by lynda.com. Go to lynda.com forward slash Android to learn more. Welcome back to Android Weekly. My name is Jace, and in this past week, we saw a boost in power with two new Snapdragons. For all those of you who are still hungry for some... But we also had some bad news about the Heartbleed vulnerability. We're going to talk about what it means for you and how to protect yourself from it. But there is little that can get me down this weekend because on Friday, I got a new girlfriend. She came in a package, and I haven't been able to keep my hands off her all weekend. And when I call her name, she listens. Okay, Google. I love you. I love you too. I never get sick of that. That's right, puppies. Nexus 5. I'm so happy. I'm in love with Android again. Android actually works. <laughs> That's great. I must say, this is a amaze balls phone. I am in love with it. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, my experience with it in detail at the next uh, Android Q&A. <sighs> but I'm happy. Let's get to the news. Alrighty then, so Qualcomm just lifted the veil on two new systems on a chip that will power the new flagship phones for 2015. And they are the Snapdragon 808 and the Snapdragon 810. Now the Snapdragon 810 is the higher end of the pair and its main features include four Cortex A57 cores and four Cortex A53 cores. Now these octo cores provide a 25 to 55% performance boost over the Cortex A15, along with a 20% increase in the power draw. Now, before you battery bugs get too concerned, you should know that both the 808 and the 810 are built on a 20 nanometer process instead of a 28 nanometer process, which means that that smaller die should offset the increased power consumption. For those of you concerned with graphics, the Adreno 418 GPU on the Snapdragon 808 should provide a 20% performance boost over the Adreno 330 that's currently in the Galaxy S5 and the HTC One M8. The Adreno 430 GPU on the 810 is even faster, with an estimated 80% increase over the Snapdragon 801. Oh, it's all right. You still have a fine Snapdragon 800. Almost obsolete. <laughs> Moving on to confirmation about the beast of a phone called the OnePlus One. Recent news regarding the OnePlus One confirms three important things. One, it has the fastest system on a chip currently on the market. Two, the GPU on the 801 is faster because it's clocked at 578 MHz. The Snapdragon 801 features the newer eMMC 5.0 standard. This means that copying and moving data to internal storage could be significantly faster. So for those of you who may have been living under a rock this past week, I need to tell you about something called Heartbleed. Heartbleed is not a virus, contrary to what some people are reporting. It is simply a vulnerability in the OpenSSL encryption library. In translated geek speak, that means that cyber criminals or even government agencies can eavesdrop on your traffic or otherwise private data that should have been going through a supposedly secure connection. Not so secure though. So there's three things that you need to do about that soon, as soon as possible. One, when and only when a, a service like Bitcasa, for example, I'm a subscriber to Bitcasa, Bitcasa emailed me and said, okay, we're aware of this vulnerability, we've patched it on our end, and we've logged you out of the service, so you can log back in and change your password. If you do it before that service has patched it on their end, and you log in with your password and change it, you're just leaving yourself to further vulnerabilities. So make sure that service has patched it on their end. Uh, Google has done all this already, so that's not a concern. The second thing you need to do is use a service called LastPass. LastPass allows you to create one strong password and then generates other passwords on its own for all your other social profiles. You only have to remember one password. That's a great thing. Number three, please pass this on to your non-geek friends and uh, show them what to do because we all need to protect our personal privacy. Hey, Linda. Yeah, Jace here. Listen, you know how people are busting blood vessels over this heart bleed bug? Yeah, it's the open SSL vulnerability that has people going. Yeah, well, do you have tutorials that teach people how to properly secure a server? Because that would help a lot. And boy, does she ever. Lynda.com has tutorials on best practices for physical, instance, network, and file system security. You can learn all that for free. Try Lynda.com for seven days by visiting lynda.com forward slash 
Android. Moving on to news that's going to make many of you happy about Project Aura. So for those of you who don't know what Project Aura is, it is an initiative by Google that allows you to upgrade individual components of your phone. So for example, if I have a phone and I've had it for you know 18 months and the system on a chip's getting a little slow, I could then go to a marketplace and buy a new system on a chip and install that on the phone as a module instead of buying a whole new phone. Fantastic, very exciting. Now, as we've reported in the past, Project Aura employs an endoskeleton of sorts that allows you to plug in these various modules. But what is new is that now we know Project Aura will support three different form factors, a mini, a medium, and a large. That's pretty cool. And if you'd like to read the article on AndroidAuthority.com, you'll see that they go into detail explaining how the Project Aria intends to go far beyond just customizing the typical RAM, CPU, and storage. Looking forward to it.